step away. God, what now? With a ghost sitting right at the foot of the stairs, how was I supposed to get back to the third floor? Shit. I don't know. Uh, go. Oh, no, we can't go that way because that's blocked off. Ah, oh, fuck. So I guess you are supposed to just kind of wander around until things happen. Which is fun. That's what I expected from this game. But still, like, it's been a little confusing, this whole journey through this game. Alright, I guess we'll just go back. Fucking ghosts. Maybe my friends are at the exit? I don't even know. They're cornering me. Oh boy. What the hell is that? What are those? <laughs> what did what had just appeared in front of me? Oh, interesting. All right, I'll uh save here too. Well, in the looks of it, you're another victim dragged here against your will, no? Well, I'll tell you now, there's no escape from this school. There is nothing to be gained here but despair. If you've got an iron will, you might be able to survive for a little while at least. Here, you should have this. It'll help you keep wandering spirits at bay, though it only works once. So take it, get out of here, and fight like hell. Stay alive for as long as you possibly can. The spirit vanished, but lying on the floor below was, was a gemstone. Specifically, a violet-colored gemstone. Probably an, uh... Oh. A, a mess... A, a me, meth... Meth... Yeah, shit. So, I can use this to keep wandering spirits at bay one time, huh? I guess he meant the full-body ones. They should have kept him at bay, too. Either way, with this gem, I felt like it could, uh, actually get my friends... I could actually get my friends to safety. I was as hopeful as one could expect, all things considered. And I was supposed to... Of course, he also said that there's no escape from here. But that was just my prerogative to believe what I wanted to believe and ignore what I want to ignore. So can I use that to get upstairs? Maybe that's the objective now? Yeah! Oh, try to sneak past. Yeah, no, that's gonna result in that other ending. The power of this gemstone compels you. Fuck off, kid. And incredibly, it actually worked. Both the ghost and the gem faded and disappeared. The stairwell was now free to be traversed. Everyone's gone. Everyone's gone. Or not. Well, what happened? Emmy's face was completely wrecked with tears, and she was shaking her head violently. She wanted to tell me something, but the words weren't just coming. I had a really bad feeling. I ran past her to the bathrooms to where Katayama was being lifted onto Yu's shoulders when I left. Why? Atiyama was back on the floor, right where we set him down for this whole ordeal began. Why wasn't he on your shoulders? What was going on? I had an inkling, but I didn't want to believe it, so I pushed it out of my mind. Oh shit. 
That's a horrifying way to go. I didn't know what else to say. A person that just died. And not some stranger, but a person I knew. A friend. It was the strangest feeling. I kept looking at him and thinking, is he really dead? Is this really what a person looks like when he dies? Seeing him like that drained every last bit of energy I had in me. I fell to my knees, thoroughly defeated. I don't know. I just don't know. Emmy and I couldn't stay near the body. We'd gone down to the second floor where we picked a cor corner and just stood there, trying to recompose ourselves. Yuya elected to stay with Okawa on the third floor. I guess to try to break him from his shock and help him help put some distance between him and Katayama. None of this felt real. Or maybe I just didn't want it to be real. It was a nightmare. It had to be. I'd just sit up in my bed and it would be all over. <laughs> Just beating yourself up. Try to wake yourself up. Okay, that's a weird expression change on your face. Okay, there's the face I, <laughs> I expected. Even the toughest people you know when they're dealing with something this bad, like they start you start to see a different side of them. Which is not a bad thing, but still. I can see that she's like shocked that she's like this. Or I'm or me? I'm like that. Uh, my energy was winding down winding again. I sank to the ground, landing on my knees, just melting into the floor. Emmy followed my lead put an arm around me and for comfort. My friend had just died. He just died. God, why? What was that noise? Emmy and I looked at each other. We both heard it. Footsteps coming down the hall. It was too dark to make out who it was. But the gut was de decidedly male. The two of us slowly and quietly rose to our feet, hid around the corner and peeked out, both terrified and curious as to whom or what we might see. There, at the end of the hall, the figure finally came into view. It was a tallish man, unsteadily teetering as he slowly trode towards us. It was Shimada, drenched from head to toe. Huh. Well, it didn't work out for you, huh? Da? <laughs> Emmy shot forward, intending to run towards him, but I grabbed her arm and held her back without even thinking about it. She turned and looked at me with a puzzled expression. She looked back at me again and she said this, staring right into my eyes in an almost disciplinary manner. It was the perfect guilt stare. I couldn't help but to succumb, succumb to it, feeling bad for not having filled her in about the Shimada incident. Shimada continued to 
his slow, wet walk down the hall. Then all of a sudden, for no discernible reason, he simply fell forward, landing hard on his knees. Something was wrong with him, and while I loathed the man, I didn't want to see him suffer. Amy and I were both poised to rush to his aid. When other figures randomly began appearing all around him, figures of children, blue and earth, oh my god, shimmering with their own light. Oh no. Man, if you're listening to this Let's Play without headphones, you're missing out on this shit. Oh yeah, Emmy never saw a ghost before. We could barely even see Shimada from our vantage point anymore, and his body was obscured almost completely by the backs of those ghost children. He wasn't moving, though so it didn't seem like they were doing anything to him. But then, he wasn't moving. At all. It seemed highly suspicious. It occurred to me that maybe we should try to save him. I inched forward. He was still in exactly the same position we, we, uh, he had been when he fell to his knees. He literally hadn't moved at all. Was he unconscious? Emmy and I looked at one another and nodded. It was a silent signal to move forward and do whatever we could to help. Um. Alright, you guys see it, right? The children vanished as we approached, revealing a horrific sight. Shimada's stomach had been flayed wide open. He was dead. The knife he flaunted earlier was j jutting fr jutting from his wound he was an almost it was almost a ceremonial death like that of a samurai throwing himself into the sword uh, seppuku that's what's called another friend dead as we take turns stream screaming Kind of like what that spirit told us. We were we were not gonna live this. She should tell Emmy what that spirit said. Kasami's face. <laughs> what? You who uh, presumably rushed down to see what was wrong. Kami walked over to Shimada's body. He was checking for signs of respiration or pulse. He turned back to face us again a moment later, and his facial expression said it all. Shimano really was dead. I was beginning to lose it. I just couldn't take this anymore. My friends and acquaintances were dying one by one. I guess I should say, had died. But it didn't seem like it was over, not by a long shot. Hell, it was doing more than trying. It had been already succeeding, succeeded twice over. I was scared, I was paranoid, I was shaking and crying and screaming inside. I was deathly afraid of something else would show up. And then it did! Oh my god. Oh boy. It was a little girl in a red dress standing between us and the third floor staircase. I couldn't make out the expression on her face though through her bangs. And I could literally feel the hatred in her eyes as she stared into our souls. Then she turned around and slid up the staircase onto the third floor hallway. Emmy was turned the other way, so she hadn't seen the girl at all. 
She eventually followed our gazes, and by that time the girl was gone. She looked confused. That particular apparition looked a lot different from the other ghosts we had seen. But there was still no doubt in my mind. She was definitely a ghost. Yeah, wait here by yourself. God. Dangerous? Well, that is the direction the girl in the red dress went. And I guess Yuya didn't want me to be put in harm's way. I nodded and watched his back recite into the darkness as he chased after Emmy. Now see, here's the thing, like, you don't, it's moments like these that you want to prevent, where the girl is just standing there by herself, just complete silence, and like freaking out that she doesn't hear a sound, like, dead silence is the scariest thing to hear, almost. To stay calm? Oh shit. Why did you run away by yourself? This is exactly what's gonna happen. What was going on? Why was Emmy screaming? I could hear voices now. Emmy and Okawa were having a heated argument. They always say that. He can't be. Leave him and run? We'll get caught? That ghost girl must have been pursuing them. Who? Me? Oh. What in the world's going on? Katayama's body was sp sprawled unceremoniously onto the landing halfway up the third floor, along with Okawa. At the top of the staircase stood Emmy, and in front of her, Yuya, with an imposing scowl on his face. I didn't understand any of this. What had just happened? <laughs> Emmy let out another scream and came running towards me down the stairs. Okawa then seemed to have fallen and broken his arm. He was lopsidedly crawling towards me, and almost as if he were trying to distance himself from Yuya. Oh man, to her it's not going to make any sense, because in her mind he's so perfect and mysterious and, and has a great reputation. I ran to the base of the stairs to meet up with Emmy. I needed some sort of context here. Are you sure it was him? But he's so cool though. I glanced up at Yuya, but his face was shrouded in darkness. I couldn't make out any expression at all. That's not good. Okawa seemed to have reached his breaking point. He shot to his feet and took off behind me towards the second floor as fast as, she, as, fast as he could. Yuya kicked Okawa down the stairs? Why? Yuya. 
Slowly he walked down to the landing. He was neither concerned nor scornful. His face was a blank state. As soon as he was reached, as soon as he reached my level, he bent down and began fiddling with Katayama's body, raising the arms, then letting them drop, wiping blood from the ears and nose, then looking at it as if studying a specimen under a microscope. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a great laugh. What the hell? He was enjoying this? I finally got to see an emotion written clearly on his face and it was... Elation? Elation? How is this not some crazy dream? I can't tell if this is him being him or if he's possessed. Or both. Tears began spilling from my eyes like water. I was shocked, confused, and I don't even know what else. found ourselves standing in front of the door at the school infirmary. Do we have to look for the key? The poor girl was frantic. I can't say I blamed her. But well, something about this whole situation just didn't feel right to me. They saw him do it, and she didn't, so that's why she's acting like this, but still. Oh, wow. You weren't there! Take their word for it. It happened, I seen it. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm cool with that because, like, we need to get going. With that, Emmy pushed me out of the way and ran past me towards that stairwell leading to the first floor. <laughs> and off she went. I was now separated from every one of my friends. But was I really in danger? I mean, I was, but from Yuya? That didn't seem right. Or more likely, I didn't want it to be. I wanted to believe that this was all a misunderstanding. My legs were shaking, my head was swimming, I just stood there unsure as to where I should go or what to do. And then there he was. Right behind me. And in his hands were Shimada's huge knife. The one that was seen uh, judging in uh, Shimada's stomach, it was still dripping with blood. This definitely made matters more complicated. How could I doubt Yuya's guilt when he was holding something like that? Why did he ha even have it? How could he possibly bring himself to pull a knife on his friend's lifeless corpse? But I wasn't going to run. I turned around and I braced myself. I opened my mouth, intent on discussing this rational rationally. If I ran away now, I felt like it would be all over. There would be nothing left to save. No one left to trust. But what could I possibly say to him? Oh yeah, here we go. Why'd you do it? Oh man, which one is the... Oh no, with this game's all screwed up with like... The choice I think will lead to a bad end ended up resulting in a good end, so... 
Uh, I, hmm, I guess why did you do it? Although both are probably going to re... re <laughs> I feel like they're both going to uh, end up with him stabbing me in the stomach. I think this one would be most less likely. Why did you do it? body was still visibly sh shuddering and my voice was breaking. I unconsciously taken into taken a, a custody tone with him. It was just not at all what I wanted, but it was too late to take it back now. I hope he didn't notice, but he did. As soon as the word why slipped from my lips, his eyes glazed over. It was as if all the warmth and compassion I'd seen there before was trapped and drained leaving behind nothing more than an empty container. Oh. He <laughs> just walk away? And then he... <laughs> then he just started... Uh, then he just started muttering to himself and slowly walked right past me, as if I weren't even there. He's definitely more talkative than before. No, I couldn't let this go on. I grabbed him by the arm and just clung to him putting my full weight into his body to keep him from going any further down the hallway. He was at a crossroads, about to walk down a path of no return, and I wasn't going to lose the kind, considerate Uya I had fallen for. Unfortunately, the only tools I had at my disposal for stopping were my feelings, and those just weren't going to be enough. Oh! I was so startled that he took, took the moment before... I was so startled that it took me a moment before I had figured out what just happened. It was the first time in my entire life that I had ever been punched in the head. And he had put everything he had into it. I couldn't focus. My brain was still rattling inside my skull from the impact. The world was spinning. I looked up at him with a spasmodic, twitchy, tear-filled eyes. There was no sign of remorse or compassion whatsoever. He looked like a feudal warrior, clutching his sword and staring down at his enemy. The area all around my eye was throbbing. It hurt so badly and I felt so swollen and sore. I couldn't even imagine what it must have looked like. And he wasn't done with me. He got in closer and closer, grinning unnaturally as he raised his fist for a second strike. Oh, great. Oh, she got away! I... wow. I'm shocked. I was running on pure instinct and adrenaline at this point. I shot to my feet and just forced them to carry me to safety. Somewhere. Anywhere. He was going to kill me. He was really going to kill me. God! I was really trying to go for the choice I felt like would result in a, uh, in progress, not a bad end. And I, I'm... I was 100% on a bad end there until just now. That's that's crazy. I felt something rattling around uncomfortably inside my mouth, so I spit into my hand. Oh, that makes sense. It was white. A single white tooth with blood red highlights at its roots. That maniac had actually knocked out some white teeth. 
Oh no, I'm hideous. No, but seriously, that's gruesome. He was there, just behind me. I panicked, tripping over my own feet and stumbling onto the ground onto the landing between the first and second floor. Oh no. I fall on my backside, dropping my tooth onto the ground next to me. I began slinking away from the encroach encroaching figure of Uya Kazami. Save me somebody. Anybody. God, please. I was scooting back, uh, backwards across the floor, too stiff, sore, and scared to do to stand. But then my hand brushed across something small and metallic. A key! <laughs> Even with my hand right over it, I was shaking so badly that I could barely work my fingers to get a grip. It was the most frustrating feeling in the world, and for a few seconds, felt like hours, I just kept trying in vain to pick up that damned key. Finally, I slipped my finger through the ring. I had it. This was my one and only chance. Scrambling to my feet, I somehow slipped past Uya. I ran back to the second floor, as fast as I could force my shaky legs to carry me. I had the key. I could lock myself in. I could hide in the infirmary. Wow. Kazami didn't pursue, not right away. He just stood there, staring. Oh, that's creepy. Staring at the tooth that I had dropped on the ground. Okay, that's even creepier. Staring intently, as if trying to make out what he was seeing. Well, it didn't take him long to figure out what it was. Okay. Okay. That's really graphic. Like sounds. Oh, wow. Having a good time there, buddy? It's disgusting. As the sad music plays. Oh shit. There didn't seem to be any way to lock the door from the inside, which is weird. I need to find a hiding place before Yuya showed up. The corner of the room? Under the bed, maybe? I was scanning every inch of the room as quickly as possible, sizing up my surroundings. My eyes stopped on one of the medicine shelves. I grabbed the scissors. It felt like such a revelation, like the answer I was looking for. But what was I going to do with the scissors? Was I going to fight? Fight who? Him? I wouldn't stand a chance. I decided to leave them there. I stepped back and crouched down behind the partition screen, partitioning screen, and was set up in the middle of the room. <laughs> 